Guys, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whenever you're catching this, what's the crack? No, I did say good morning, but uh, I have two important things to bring to your attention today. They're going to help you to get rich and not poor. Because, uh, fortunately, 2023 is going to be a year where a lot of people are going to get poor. And I'd like to forewarn you, understand how you can position yourself, because knowledge is power. Okay? It's all about information. The only difference between having a good result and having a bad result is having the information. Okay? And I suppose second to that is actioning the information. But you got to start with the information. And that's where we're going to start today. Um, don't know if you've seen the sunrise this morning. <laughs> it was not a shepherd's delight. <laughs> red sky in the morning, it was an ultimate red sky. So who knows what the weather's going to do now, next day or so. But it looked ominous. And uh, I think the economy looks very much the same. Um, so I just got off listening to uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Now, if you're not sure about all this Bitcoin nonsense and you're just here to make some money, okay, you won't know who that is. His name is Jerome Powell, good old Jerome. And basically, okay, whatever Jerome says will dictate the quality of your life. So whatever words come out of that man's mouth will dictate your cost of living, will dictate how you can live your life, will dictate the price of money. And the price of money is half of everything in the world. The price of money dictates how the world works. Okay, so it's important to understand and listen to what this man says, if you're interested in finance at all. And, you know, you can say that that's a mad thing because it's like, why should the whole world hang on the words of what one man is saying? It seems a bit crazy, like, but that's the system that we live in. It's called the fiat standard. And uh, the dollar is the world's reserve currency. Morn. So you can, uh, you can argue with reality, but you will lose every time. So we just accept it and we... On the sideline, we're building a different standard, don't worry. Uh, we have a lifeboat, we have a parachute, we have uh, we have a boat that's not sinking. And uh, we're onboarding people onto it as fast as possible. No one is forced, everyone comes to their own decision and decides to onboard onto the lifeboat. Okay? <clears throat> so, the first thing is John Pell. Now, it doesn't matter um, what, what, what you do, what your profession is, Okay, nobody can escape Jerome's world, words. On the Irish government media now, we're advertising grants, okay, and assistance, and we're blaming the cost of living crisis on the war in Ukraine. But that's not the whole picture, that's not the whole story. Putin is the fall guy. It's not all Putin's fault, okay. Um, I had Greg Foss on my podcast yesterday and I asked Greg, I says, why don't they teach, you know, because he understands money and I understand money a little bit better than I did. And I can tell you, when I didn't understand money, I was poor. And being poor was shit. I'll just be honest. Being poor was shit. Okay? Struggling for money, having to think about everything you buy. Wanting to be able to buy nice things and having to just go for the cheapest thing, cheapest bit of food. That was shit. Okay? So it was not good. And so I said, Greg, why don't they teach us this stuff in school? Why don't they teach us about money in school? You know, because he's a money manager. He's 35 years on Wall Street. Successful trader. Trades hundreds of millions. For 35 years, like. So he knows the thing. He says, Dinny, they couldn't tell you how the system works. Because the system relies on people like you and people like me. We run the system. And I don't mean we run the system by working in the system, by building the system, by building roads and infrastructure. I mean we run the system because the system runs in debt. So the system needs you to be in debt. It needs you to have a mortgage. Okay? It needs you to have a credit card. It needs you to live above your means. It needs you to spend money that you don't have. Okay? It needs you to borrow and it needs you to pay back interest. And that's how fiat money works. It's basically a money system built on debt. And that's great for the system. It's not great for you. It doesn't really give you much freedom. It doesn't really give you much options. And uh, it sort of traps you, enslaves you. You're always chasing this hurdle rate of inflation. Not only that, or this hurdle rate of debt repayments, but not only that, but we make it harder because <laughs> we keep moving the goalposts. So what the system also does is, and, you know, you could, there's no individual politician's fault. I've talked to politicians, most of them have no clue how money works. Any of the ones I've talked to, I haven't yet to talk to a politician that understands how money works. Crazy. They make all the money decisions. But anyway, crazy world, isn't it? So not only do we, do we have this debt hurdle, but then what we do is we change the rules. 
Okay, we keep moving the goalposts on you. The unit of account. The money, we debase it. And what that means is, we make it worth less. Okay? So every year it's worth less, it buys you less. So not only do you have this debt burden, but your unit, to try and repay it, we're constantly debasing that. Okay? But it's not keeping up with the cost of living. So your, your like wages to debt ratio is expanding. Okay, so wages to debt ratio. Now I understand that the debt is debased as well as the currency is debased. And you know, if you get it right, you can leverage that. But most people don't understand that concept. And because their wages to debt ratio isn't there, uh, because the wage to debt ratio isn't keeping up, that's expanding. It just means you're digging, you're digging down rather than digging up. And it just makes it harder and harder. And you do get out of it. You know, when you're about 70, most people are able to escape it. But like you've lost the best part of your life in that. Okay, so guys, if you like this content, make sure you just hit the, hit the like button. I'd really encourage everyone. So my two things to say. My first thing is go and check out the podcast with Greg Foss. Um, Greg is huge in the Bitcoin space. Um, talks on all the biggest podcasts. He was an amazing guest to get. And I said to him at the start of the podcast, says, Greg, I know you come on, you talk about gamma squeezes and you go deep into math because that's how you manage money with math, math and probability. I says, but I don't want to go there. I want to keep this for the Irish people. To the normal man like me, I call it Dini science. Okay, so talk in terms that everyone can understand. And a lot of people are saying it's one of the best podcasts they've ever seen Greg do because I wouldn't let him go. I wouldn't let him go deep into his financial jargon. I kept pulling it back and 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 really begged him to keep it super simple. So a lot of people are saying that was the best podcast that they've seen Greg on, which is amazing because he's been on a lot of podcasts. Second thing, okay, Jerome Pell who we chatted about there five minutes ago, I explained to you who he was and why you should listen to what he says and why I take time out of my day to see what this guy's saying because it's going to dictate how my business is run over the next, you know, year. Um, John Pell needs you. He needs you to lose your job. Okay? Not only Jerome. The system needs you to lose your job. The system needs you to default on your mortgage. You'll be doing us all a favour if you let your house be repossessed. Okay? If you fail on your debt. Because that's what we need. That's how we fix inflation, is to bankrupt loads of people. So what Jerome is doing now, and it's funny, I watched a little clip, I'm going to put it up on my story, when they all laugh, like, <laughs> you know, when they talk about, would you have raised interest rates more if you knew about the labour market? So the, central, the Federal Reserve are raising interest rates. And when you raise interest rates, what that causes is, well, the end result is it causes massive recession. Okay? What do recessions cause? They cause people to default, people to lose their jobs, people to go bankrupt people to go through hard times. But it was kind of funny when they were talking about that because the whole audience, that can economic thing, a load of rich people, they all started laughing. You know, would you have raised the interest rates more if you knew that the labour market was so strong? And they, all, they all just laughed. They're like, yeah, probably would have. Feckers, we're, we're not destroying enough jobs. We need to destroy more jobs. Like, it's not going to destroy their job. They're fine. It's going to destroy the working man, the working woman, the people who are building the country. Okay? People who are maintaining the country. They're the ones who are going to have to go bankrupt. They're the ones that are going to have to lose their jobs, lose their homes, go through financial hardship. Okay? That's not really Jerome's fault. He's just the man who's put in charge of running the system. And he can only run the system with the rules he has. You need to understand that, though. Okay? 2023 will be a hard year. I'm really confident of that. You're going to see a lot of companies close. You're going to see a lot of people lose their job. I hope it's not you. But someone needs to. It's got to be someone. Someone's got to go down. Okay? We've got to fix this inflation thing. And that just means we raise interest rates until we cause enough for a recession. Or they talk about a soft landing, but, you know, likely that's not going to happen. Um, why is that not going to happen? Well, if you look at their track record uh, in taming inflation, they got that totally wrong. So why do you think they're going to get a soft landing? Right, a soft landing just means we, we bring up interest rates slowly and the economy just slows down gradually and there's not a crash, there's not a recession. But we're late to the party. Now what we've done is we've done the opposite. So we've raised interest rates, or drone has, faster than ever before in all recorded history. Now the thing about interest rates is they're lagging. Okay, when you raise the interest rate, you don't get an effect in the economy. The economy is such a big and complex machine. It's the most complex machine on possibly our universe or our known universe or, or what we know of in the universe is the human economy. Okay, the market. So it's a lagging indicator. So we don't know the effects of it yet. And we probably won't find out the effects in 2023. And if we've over-raised interest rates and we cause financial Armageddon, well, there's nothing we can do about it. We don't even know what's going to happen until 23. So I say, buckle up. <laughs> Strap in. Seatbelts on, folks.
live below your means. <clears throat> and uh, another little tip I have is get skills. Okay? Skills that mean you can survive. Skills that mean you can generate, you can support your family. You don't need to rely on anyone else. That's the sort of skills you need to learn. You know, and I think skills with your hands is going to come back. Because this decade, AI, it's going to disrupt all the jobs. But it's not going to disrupt the skill jobs with their hands. When we thought it was, but it's not. It's going to disrupt all the software jobs, all the office jobs. You guys are in trouble. You guys need to learn how to feckin' hold a hammer. <laughs> but it's no harm. You know, it's good to have skills to work with your hands. But, um, guys, remember, just ignore the scammers in the comments if there is any. And, uh, do me a favour, hit the like button if you like this message. You think other people have their head up in the sand. <laughs> they probably need to hear why just going around and trying to earn money is a dumb thing if you don't understand how money works. Um, I'm always into what's the move I can make that's going to give me the biggest return, okay? And I came to the conclusion that there was no point in working. It took me a long time, but I was like, there's no point in working. There's no point in exchanging my time for money when I don't understand money. I can have a bigger impact by working much less, not working 90% as much as I used to, but by understanding the rules of this game. I'm actually more efficient with 10% less output by understanding the rules of the game so clearly. And that's what it's all about, it's about efficiency, okay? That's what everything is about. Efficiency, conservation of energy. And, uh, and then just to go on a little dinny bomb, I'll drop a, a bomb because I haven't been on in a while, I've been super busy with consulting. Um, a lot of people are coming to the conclusion that they need to do something, they need to set up a plan to retire early, it needs to be something that's not correlated to their regular financial system, because they see that they're just printing money, they're debasing everything they have, they're taxing their home, so the investment property, that was great for a time, but guess what, they're going to take it off you, you're going to lose that, how are they going to take it, they're just going to tax it so high that it's not going to be worth your while holding a second property or a third property anymore, okay, they need those houses, there's a lot of people coming into the country, they don't have houses, you've got to give them their house man, <laughs> okay, so that's why we get exposure to a system that's not correlated to any of that stuff and it's like insurance. Greg goes into the math on the podcast of how the insurance policy works and he says it's just math. <laughs> yeah, so check it out. But uh, guys, hope you have a super day today. I'm just about to head into the gym. Got consulting um, today in the, uh, at 12 o'clock and then I have another session in the afternoon. So I'm going to go in, get a workout in, get a big pump on, have to crack. Some of the stuff might seem, uh, you know, uh, doom and gloom stuff, but it's not at all. It's like, once you understand this, you understand this game, it's like, oh my god, I'm privy to some information here that everyone needs, no one knows. Jesus Christ, like, this is going to be such a fucking amazing ride. Um, you know, so it's very positive stuff, especially if you're here and you're learning about Bitcoin, and you're not just in the get rich quick, you know, you're actually trying to understand the technology and you understand the scarcity, and, you know, you, you click. Everyone needs this thing! None of them understand it, and I do, or I'm learning it. Like, look at the asymmetric advantage you have. Um, Greg called it the best trade opportunity of his life. That's 35 years of experience. You know, it's a pretty big statement. Anyway, into the gym we go, guys. Big pump. Have a super day. Get moving. Okay.